All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to explore oxymercuration, where you add an oxygen on the more substituted carbon and a mercury on the less substituted carbon. And I just realized I'm on the wrong screen. Sorry, coming back. I needed this one. Oxygen on the more substituted carbon. Oxygen being a more electronegative element on the more substituted carbon. And if you're saying, but Dr. Whitaker, I don't know the electronegativity of mercury. Oh, come on. It's a metal. It's never going to be more electronegative than oxygen. Okay. Oxygen's number two for all elements. So the answer for is oxygen more electronegative is always yes, except for one element, fluorine. And we don't play much with fluorine in this course. Okay. And it's still anti because it's still part of triangle day. Uh, mechanism uh, has to do with the fact that we have an ionic compound. We haven't had one of those in a while. And most ionic compounds dissociate to some extent in water. And this one doesn't fully dissociate. Or you may have used the word ionize when you were learning this for the first time in your solubility rules and all that stuff. This one's soluble because it breaks apart to uh, mercury with one of the acetates still remaining and the acetate falls off. So when one of these bonds breaks, which atom is pulling harder on the electron? Mercury or oxygen? Oxygen. So no surprise, the electrons go towards oxygen. You create two species, you're gonna need both. The acetate ion, I'm gonna draw out. You don't have to draw it out every time. Hg plus, and here's a short form for us. O, uh, let's go with different color, Ac. AC equals acetyl, not acetate, equals, uh, it's attached to something, and here it is, CH3, there's your acetyl. So acetyl attached to O is therefore, acetyl attached to O is acetate group, as opposed to acetate ion. They're both called acetate. And acetate has a, uh, a preview PKB. Let's see if we remember from our last uh, discussion. 14 minus something. Give me the something. You're not talking about this species, pKa. You're talking about its conjugate acids, pKa, and I need the number. I tried drawing it out so you would see which functional group the conjugate acid would be in. I don't think it worked. Um, five. five. Yes, acetate is the conjugate base of the carboxylic acid, acetic acid, pKa5. So. When I ask you later in this video to tell me which base is the best base, you're not gonna give me a 17 this time like the last video. You're comparing nine to water, which would be 17. And that's a billion times stronger right here. So when you need a base, you're gonna give me acetate. But we don't need a base yet. Mercury with a plus charge. There's nothing an alkene likes better. Seriously. This react reaction happens like instantly. The alkene sees mercury with a plus and bonds with it. And it makes a special triangle. 
different than our previous triangles because this one only had one arrow to make the triangle right here one arrow to make the triangle previous example both of these arrows were responsible for making both of these bonds right here these are real bonds because two arrows made them two electrons per arrow that's how I got me confused. Yes, this is only one arrow, and it's going to make a bond to mercury, but a, not a normal bond. And it's not a dash either. It looks like it might be a dash. It's not. So however, however you draw dashes, make sure this is different. Oh, I can do the uh, OAC, but... O A C purple A C. So still got the A C O bonded to mercury, and now the plus charge is not on the mercury like it was before. Mercury got some electron, but not a full bond. Carbon lost a bit of a bond each time, each carbon. All I'm trying to say is the plus charge is equally, well, not, I shouldn't say equally, is distributed among the three elements that are in the triangle. If you had to guess where the plus charge uh, spends most of its time, you'd say on the metal, because metals are better with plus charge. Second best, tertiary carbon. Why hyperconjugation? So when you're, Asking which carbon is going to be attacked in the next step, it's, our answers has been the same for a long time. The more substituted carbon. We had a question by Jack. Does it happen with all metals? Just mercury. You asked, does it happen with all metals? And uh, it happens with some other metals, but we will never cover those. And it's not very general at all. Mercury is pretty much it. Okay. And your plus charge is shared. So here's how you show that. It's in the middle. All three atoms are spreading the burden. And my question for you is, why didn't we do this with hydrogen when we attacked hydrogen before? Hydrogen can't do this. It did not. It's got an H and it should be able to do this, right? Okay. That's a little typewriter humor there. Mm. No, hydrogen, what element number is it? One, massive one, right? What's the mass of a mercury? What's the big red number there? I don't know. It's like close to 200, right? Yeah. No, nobody's in this room's close enough to the periodic table to read it. <laughs> oh, real close to 200. Yeah. So yeah, this thing's 200 times bigger than hydrogen. So guess what it can do that hydrogen can't? It can sit on top of the two carbons. Seriously, mercury is big enough where here's your ball of mercury, see it? And there's a carbon underneath, just a little to the left and a little to the right. It's sitting on top of both carbons simultaneously. It's like, it looks like a triangle here, but it's not really, it's like almost touching each carbon. That's how big mercury is. So hydrogen can't do that. This cation is a lot more stable because mercury, you know, like a twofer. And what's going to happen next? How did you get the O on there last time? Water, same as this time. Triangles. Why did I go for that carbon? Yeah, of all the resonance forms, it, it's where the cation would live the second most frequently. And we don't like attacking mercury. It doesn't get us where we need to go. Got to attack the water, the, uh, the more substituted character. Now, there's no arrow to break a partial bond. And I forgot to tell you, these bonds here, they're called partial bonds. And I screwed up a little bit, but not much. Partial bonds. There's one more. Remember, when you do your triangle, you need a whole triangle worth of partial bonds. 
So there's still the full sigma bond between the carbons. And now there's an added partial bond between the two carbons. So sort of like a partial pi, how's that? And there's a partial sigma there and a partial sigma. Uh, three partial bonds. came from two electrons in one curved arrow. I will illustrate what I mean by that with a yellow highlighter. One curved arrow was right here. I put it on the top of the screen. So those aren't real bonds. If you draw real bonds, those are four electrons. Six if you do three real bonds. Don't do that. And we get an oxonium ion. Oh, I, I, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. I'm a little excited here. We're making new bonds. I get excited. And we have, uh, let's see, backside of the triangle. With, we'll, we'll decide. If that came in from one side and the mercury got pushed to the back, this is a real dash, a real bond. All the electrons end up here. A yellow highlighter. There's the two electrons. ACO and purple, not highlighter though. AC was bonded to O, was bonded to HG. Uh, plus on the O, I, I seem consistent on forgetting my oxonium today. Don't do that. Uh oh, she picked a PKB 17 ahead of a PKB 9 for what base to use. She, she remembered the last video where we had to use water to take the H off. And she told me to use water to take the H off. Why is that a mistake? Acid base says 9, which is acetate is a million times better as a base than water. Well, it's more, it's a hundred million times. The difference is eight, right? 17 was the water PKB. 17 minus nine is eight. That's 10 to the powers of eight, which is a hundred million. Wow, don't make that mistake. I won't take a hundred million points off, I promise. Just one. <laughs> it wouldn't even be one. I'd take a half point off if you use the wrong base. If your arrows were good and you used the wrong base, Half point, see? Okay, so let's get that base down here. You created it way up on the top of the screen. It's a little bit cluttered down here, so I redrew it. Oh, that doesn't go to there. That doesn't go to there. Where does it go to? We're doing the top part of the screen here, right? And I'm going to tell you how I test the bottom part. The bottom part would uh, either be a blank here where this is gone. And you should be able to put that chemical back that I just took off. That's one version of the test question for NABH4. The other version is. This is a blank. And you, there's nothing in there. It won't, it won't, let me erase it. There you go. Can you fill it in and tell me what goes there? You should be able to. You just replace the mercury with an H. That's it. There it is. I don't, that other H, I'm just going to point out, I never needed to draw it because it was always there. So no, I don't need to see that other H. I was doing it as a teacher. There's only one new H there. It's green. Black H was there from the beginning. Okay? So I just need to see really this new OH. And just stick figure this if you want. You want to show, you know, an acceptable mm -hmm. test version of your answer could also be written. 
this way, correct? I didn't change the molecule. That's it. That's what I want to see right there. Uh, you, your mercury is missing. She asked, how do I know she did the work? Look, you did the work. The mercury has gone, right? It's not there. You knew what happened to it. It got replaced by an H. Yes, sir. How do you, like, if you want to name this molecule? This one here? Just like this. You know, like the two, the two H's and one H, one H is on a dash, one is on a wedge. What do we, how do we name it? You don't. Just name it like there's just H's. You don't need to draw. Then you'd have to name all the H's, wouldn't you? If you had to name these two H's, you got to name those two, those two, those two, this one, this one. Doesn't matter. They're, they're not a group, so you don't get a name. He's asking, how do I name these two H's? And I say, you don't. They're part of the name. They're part of the bicycle name. Just leave the carbon two has nothing on it. Your name should have nothing on carbon two. Yeah, there you go. So currently it's, I think it's R bicyclo uh, four, three, zero. Non-aim, right there. And non and all, non and one all. We haven't named alcohols yet, so do not worry about what I just said. And that's it for that. Coming back.